We have all experienced firsthand how the spread of COVID-19 has changed the global landscape, affecting our financial, professional, and social environments. While some factors are beyond individual control, many people learn quickly how to adjust during this period for the benefit of their livelihood and their businesses. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing the dynamic Michelle Chong, CEO of Honeybun, who strongly believes in growing, not going, through a pandemic. This is Wealth Unlocked. Hi, Michelle, welcome. Hi, Tracy, how are you? I am fine. Oh, thank I am you. More thank than you fine, for actually. Me. Thank you for coming. I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm a huge fan, so very excited about this conversation. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get straight into it. Yes. So, Honeybun, yes. which you and your husband started over three decades ago yes, now. Yes, that's right? right. So my question for you, not sure if you've gotten this one before, but how did you two decide that you would lead the company? You would be CEO. We don't have very many, unfortunately, women-led businesses, and especially mm -hmm. 30 years ago, I'm sure it was yes. even more rare then. So what, who decided and, and what, what drove that decision? Well, my husband had a business in Canada in the food industry. And when he came back to Jamaica, he started to do other business endeavors. And he bought Honeybun. And I was teaching at the time. And he said, I need you to come and help me. So we were both working in the business at first. Then we discovered we had different management styles. Ah. And it was a little bit conflicting. And he said, well, I will continue to do my business and you run Honeybun. Okay. So that was easy enough. Yeah, I think so. I think so. But, but clearly a great decision. Honeybun has grown from strength to strength. As a matter of fact, you are awarded Businesswoman of the Year in 2020. Congratulations. Thank you. What advice do you have for budding entrepreneurs, um, especially female entrepreneurs, based on your over 30 year um, leading this great institution or this great company, Honeybun? Mm -hmm. So Tracy, it's not all the time you know that you're going to be one of those <laughs> that are going to make it. There are days when you figure that this is not going to happen. So I believe, and I have cemented this belief, that you have to start off with an objective. Your objective can change, but you have to always wake up in the morning knowing what you want to achieve, and then you have to focus. And I find that once you know what your objective is, you magnetically draw the things you need to happen to you. To achieve that. So when you're all over the place, you're not drawing anything, you're drawing lint, you're drawing garbage, you're drawing extra work. You got to know what you want to achieve. We are coming out of, of, of the pandemic, um, which had its challenges for, for a lot of businesses. You actually participated in a forum during the pandemic and one of the, the impactful phrases that you said, you said that businesses need to learn to grow through the pandemic, not just go through it. How was Honeybun able to grow through the pandemic? And were there any new lessons that you may have learned as a result of the pandemic? Okay, so I believe what had happened was that Honeybun as a company has always had good governance. So we were kind of always doing the right thing. We always wanted to do what the bigger companies are doing, what international best standards are. So we were building a strong foundation. So I think that is what brought us through the pandemic. So I looked at the topic on growing through the pandemic. And you know, you have two feet. And if you want to pivot, you have to put one foot on the ground and the ground better be solid. And then the other foot moves you in a direction. So you have to change, you have to fit. I mean, there were times when we had to change our staff schedule all the time, depending on the curfew hours. But we could always do it because we had a strong foundation on how to make changes. We had that communication channel to workers. So strong foundations help you to go through very many things. And I always say challenges to opportunity or C2O you have to be able to take on the challenges to be able to realize the opportunities. One foot firmly planted on the ground. 
It's, it's interesting that you mentioned your approach to, to governance and, and it's one thing to, to say something, but it's another thing to do it. And your results actually speak for itself because yeah. every year on year, when I attend the Stock Exchange Best okay. Practices Awards, Honey Bun cleans up the <laughs> awards and it's actually a, a, a very heavily corporate governance based, yes. based awards. So, you yes. know, congratulations Thank on that. You. And, you know, clearly you're leading the charge and leading by example. So we're still on the business side. Um, you mentioned earlier of focus on government, governance, sorry, not so much on wealth, but at the end of the yeah. day, you still have to, the bottom line is still important, right? Yes. And you have shareholders that you have yeah. to, to be accountable mm -hmm. to. So what keeps you focused on the business growing, the business continuing to be, be profitable? So as a public company, what it is that keeps me focused, because you know, shareholders are interested in wealth and profits. I'm a shareholder, yes, we yes. are. Okay. <laughs> yes, so in order to achieve that, I needed to develop new skills as well. And so the board of directors provide that guidance. And I have been growing in that area as well. So the whole experience of being public has been very good for me because it's an opportunity to continue to grow in areas that weren't primarily at the front for me, particularly wealth. <laughs> and uh, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. And, you know, you're looking at year over year all the time. So I'm very focused on achieving high standards. So that becomes just one of the other things that you're focused in, on doing. So this is wealth unlocked and many people have actually not been able to unlock wealth or un unlock wealth in the most effective way. What are your views or principles on creating financial success and how have you been able to create financial success for yourself as Michelle and also for Honeybun? So I think that when people talk about wealth, they often think about financial. And I know that success is an important part of this discussion. But I was never driven by wealth, which is strange to hear that you're in business and you're not driven by wealth. No, not strange, especially <laughs> when you mention that the top priority for you is governance. Yes, but. yes, yes. So the important thing is for me is that you're living your passion. And I was a person who always wanted to teach. So when my husband called me to work in the business, I was teaching and I really loved teaching. It was my passion. All my life I grew up, I wanted to be a teacher. So I was disappointed. But when I went to work with him at Honeybun, I was like, oh, but I have all these employees that I can teach, just different things. So I'm connected with what I love to do. And I just put what I love to do. I just changed my mindset about it. So if it's teaching, I'm still teaching. So my passion is what really focused me on achieving the best I can. And I have really high standards. So, you know, once you're purpose driven, it helps a lot for you to recognize the things that you want in order to make a difference. You are actually a big philanthropist. <laughs> you created the Honeybun Foundation to help other entrepreneurs, small and medium enterprises, and the creative industry. What drove you to not only start the foundation, but to focus on those areas? Well, I think that it continues on with the teaching. Having 30 years behind me in the business, or 35 years behind me, the foundation is three years now, you learn so much. What are you going to do? Die with it? <laughs> so I knew, and I was the president of the Jamaica Exporters Association. So I knew that there were a lot of small businesses that have a lot of talent who are struggling. And I figured, you know, Michelle, you have a lot of the formula as to how to succeed. Why so share, share it? it. Why not share it? I don't have anything to hide. I have nothing to compete with you about. You might be in the same business as me. I can still share something with you, especially if you're small and you don't have all your ducks in a row. I can share with you some of those things. So that's what the foundation does. We just build success models for small businesses to show them what it is. It's not that hard. We spoke about uh, wealth 
but intergenerational wealth, which especially family businesses, it should be top of mind for a lot of family businesses. I know not not all, every, all of them have some form of an ownership stake, but, but most of your children are a part of, a part of the yes. business. How important is that for you to, to build that legacy and, and have that legacy continue? And do you expect that they will continue and their children will continue? Or do you see Honeybun one day being sold to, to, to someone else? You know, I'm a type of person who I connect with my God and it's up to him what he wants to happen in my life. So, of course, we run the business so that it would be something for the children if that's what they want. But we have no intentions of forcing anybody in the business. So years ago, I met a gentleman, Lawrence, Dr. Lawrence Nicholson with yes. Mona Business yes. School. And we connected immediately and he asked me if I have a family constitution. And I said, what's that? So most people he wrote, don't know. he did a book on, on yes, family businesses in yes. Jamaica, yes. So we met after that and we have been fr long, fr long time friends now. And what it is about, it's just about providing rules for the family members in the business. Before you need an urgent meeting to call to make a decision about anything. So I found it very interesting because what it did, it made the children come off an, of an emotional high and recognize that when we're having these family meetings, it's a business meeting. So nobody's emotional. Everybody knows how to behave in a meeting. He chaired quite a few of them for us. And it has been one of the things that have really helped us as a business that most family business or all family businesses should actually have one of those. So I'm in the process of documenting a family constitution template that other family businesses can use okay, that's and great. edit. Yeah. So give them a guideline, so to speak. Very important. It is. It definitely, definitely is. Um, and I'm sure that will be useful for a lot of businesses yes. in Jamaica, new and old. Yes. Because there's still a lot of old family yes. businesses that have not yet put in that We'd type have a whole, of... A lot of old problems. Yes. <laughs> yes. Where, where do you see, or when do you see yourself saying, okay, I'm officially ready to, to, to pass on the baton, and what is next for Michelle after, after that, after being CEO of Honeybun? <laughs> well, I think that we pass on, it's a process to pass on the baton. So what we're doing now at Honeybun is doing a lot of work on leadership. We have a leadership consultant who is working with the company to develop the next level. And so sometimes my children would say to me, are you planning to die or something? <laughs> no, but succession planning no, is important. Right. So I said, not at all. But, you know, the sooner I have things more and more in place, the, more, the less I can do. And you do more. So it's a process. I don't know if there will ever come a day when I pack my bags and I said, you know, I'm gone. I will always be there to support and to help and take another role. So I can't say there's a time that I'm planning. <laughs> oh, that's fine. But what do you see yourself doing next? Definitely foundation work. Touching back on the, on the foundation, we spoke about the helping the business side of it. But another objective of the foundation is helping the creative industry. Do you have a particular affiliation with the industry? What, what made you choose the creative industry? Well, I strongly believe that that is one of Jamaica's greatest competitive advantage. As a people, we are creative. You don't even have to be educated to be creative. But as a people, we're just amazing. We have talent abounding. So we can't compete with manufacturing in China. We can't compete with technology. So what is it that we can compete on? Everybody wants to be a Jamaican. There was a day when we never said that, but now everybody wants to so be true. a Jamaican. And the problems that the creative industry have point to exactly what we're trying to do at the foundation. We're trying to give them models to become exponentially rich. And I never say that without using the word exponential. Never. So Tracy, I've always looked at actresses in LA and wondered, how is it that they can be so wealthy? They have the talent, but what is it that they have that we don't have by our creative industry 
is not producing the kind of money that they should be. And I speak about exponential wealth when I speak about it. I don't want that. I went to a, a young lady's house. Her mother, her mother worked with me and she went into dancing and I hope she's listening. <laughs> and when she did her masters in dancing and she came back, I, I said, you know, I'd like to come and meet with you because I'm interested in doing this foundation for the creative industry. So she invited me to a meeting and we literally sat on drinks crates. You know, here she's a young lady with her masters. Mm -hmm. She should be earning more. Yeah. So having looked at that, we need to build models for these young people to earn more money. What are they doing wrong? So I'm good at building models and that's what I do in my own business where I have more success maybe than some. I'm able to build successful models. Look at how the pieces go together and which piece should move. One of the things that I have recognized is that people in LA have talent managers. They have managers who manage their business for them. So why not do that? So I have not solved the puzzle, but we are having many meetings with foreign persons who want to help us. We have Zachary Harding, who is very much integral in this area of business and companies and talent. So we're building models and we will work more. The problem is that we don't really have an association focused on doing that. Yeah. So we will find what it is. No, but you, you, you're doing well and you're making progress and I, I really like that because as you said, it definitely is an industry that hasn't gotten the, the attention and the, the capital support that's needed to really get us to where we need to be. So, so kudos to you and your team Thank and you. I do hope that you, you continue and, and hopefully a platform like this will help to get more support yes. um, through your foundation for the industry. Yes. So Michelle, there's, there's a foundation, there's Honeybond, which is a publicly listed company that comes with its own set of demands. Mm -hmm. You mentioned leading the Exporters Association. There are so many different hats that you wear. You're a mother, even though your kids are big, but I assume you have grandkids, right? Mother of four. <laughs> how, how do you manage everything? So you mentioned models and templates, so you probably have a model for this, but... but <laughs> How do you do all that it is that you do? Well, you do them with mistakes. <laughs> you learn from your mistakes. Tracy, I'll tell you a quick story. I remember my four children were five years apart, the boys, and then I had a girl in the middle. All went to different schools. So I had four pickups, four school calendars. Wow. <laughs> and I remember one year I was walking in Sovereign, and my son went to Campion at the time, and I saw a Campionite in the mall. So I said to him, Hi, how are you doing? Your classes started early. He said, no, school started last week. <laughs> <laughs> so we laugh at our mistakes, right? <laughs> and learn from them. And learn from them. So, you know, thank God for Microsoft Outlook now that you can put things on there. <laughs> so you make mistakes, you laugh about them, you tell stories about them, and you enjoy them instead of beating up yourself. None of us are perfect. So to manage all those hats just required an attitude towards what do you do if I'm not doing well. So there have been years when there have been trouble, very difficult trouble, and you just have to pass through them. The important thing is going through them. Don't stop. Don't stop. Some people are going to give up. Some people are going to say, I can't do this. Just don't give up. And you will get through it and you will learn and you will grow. Just the same work we're going to do through the pandemic. I like that. So we're wrapping up now, Michelle. And, you know, I like to wrap up with some key takeaways. So success. Everybody has their own version of what success is. What is success to Michelle? And if I were to pick up Michelle's success playbook, what are the three to four key themes that would, would stand out? Mm. So uh, the, the first thing that comes to mind is, am I growing and learning? Am I helping other people to be better? And I selfishly put my children and my family first. Am I helping them to grow? Am I helping them to be better people? So, I mean, wealth has come in, yes, because 
I like to please my shareholders. I like to run a pristine business. So those are also uh, success criteria for me. But it's more about the people. The people. I love to see my people at Honeybun if they grow, if they're growing. I met with one of my supervisors and she told me, Mrs. Chung, do you know that four years ago I bought some Honeybun shares? I said, really? I said, how much you spent? She spent $50,000. And that's a lot for a, mm -hmm. you know, for a production worker. And I said, do you know what it's worth now? She doesn't know. But I'm going to find out and tell her what they're worth now. So that made me really, really happy just to know that, you know, her shares had appreciated in value and that we could be a part of her life and her, her wealth. Michelle, thank you. Thank you so much. Your passion is evident, your love for people. You. You, you are a great person, and I look forward to, to Honeybun's continued success, um, not only for me personally as a shareholder, <laughs> but you know, I, thank you. I do strongly um, appreciate the values that, that, that you've built your, your company on, mm -hmm. and I wish you all the best. Thank uh, you. And hopefully, Honeybone and NCB Capital Markets can do a lot more yes. in the future. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy.